Hey guys, this is George from Firehouse Music. And today we're going to talk about a concept. And uh, how many times, well, I don't know, because I collaborate with some writers sometimes. And um, when I was younger, uh, <laughs> I used to think whenever people would come up with a, you know, a simple chord progression, they were so proud of it. And it'd be something like, you know, like an A minor to a G, an F. And let's say they go back to G, right? And that's something that you've heard a million times, you know, in songs from the 70s on, right? And it's very easy to get, uh, you know, put it all on the person who wrote the song and be like, oh, man, this is so boring. Um, and yeah, I mean, then kind of give myself a pass when it came to time to, to play that. Yeah, you know, I'm playing is really boring, but it's really the other guy's fault. The guy who wrote the song. Uh, that changed once I started, you know, working with musicians, and uh, um, and I realized like, oh no, no, it's part of the job is to put the arrangement together, right? So um, when I collaborate with musicians now, it doesn't matter what they bring me. It doesn't matter whether they have fancy chords or if they have, um, you know, a very, a very very simple chart with just triads on there. I, I look at it as um, chords are families, so. Out of the minor chords, I have a ton of chords that I can choose from. If you say A minor, I can play whatever. I can play A minor 7, A minor 6, that's something the one in G major. Um, I can play, I don't know, A minor 9, A minor add 9. You get the idea. You know, A minor 13, just one more. One more. A minor 13. Right? And you have all these different chords that I can choose from. And then each one has a different color. And they all fit within that simple chord progression that you got. So it's not going to sound bad. Nobody's going to get mad at you. Um, and I have enough choices that if the person who wrote the song, or, you know, I, typically I look at songwriting as a collaboration. So we're writing the song. But for whatever reason, I'm working with somebody that maybe has a little bit, a little bit of an ego. And they're like, no, 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 that's not the vision I have for the song. Play something else. Okay, I have enough choices that I can be like, okay, well, what do you think about this? And I'll eventually find something that they like. Um, so I want to give you an example of that and something that you can do easily. And we've been talking about open strings and things like that. So I'm going to do my best to keep everything in the same position. We're just going to alter things a little bit. Uh, and I'll give you a couple of choices on what to do in this example of a chord progression or A minor, G... F, G, right? Um, if you rem if you recognize that as the uh, start with a heaven solo, you get extra points. Yeah. Or whatever, you know. That one. Or, and actually, that's not during the solo. That's uh, after the solo. During the solo, it's a little bit more tame. It's like... Anyway, uh, so if we have, somebody brings us that, right? And they say like, okay, play something with it. Let's write a song using this. Such an original chord progression. Okay, well, let's make it sound that way, right? So what we can do here with this A minor, I'll give you two, two options here. You can play an A sus 2. And that already has some interest to it. You can also do a sus 4. It's right there. So either, either sus 2 or sus 4 works just fine. If you want to get a little bit fancier, you can play the add nine. Add nine would be two here, and then five on the third string, and then let's open uh, the two open strings on the second and first string. So when you play it, it sounds like this. And that really sounds better to my ear, anyway. You may like this more, and that's okay. You know, we we're all musicians, and our ears are all different, and we should all sound different. I happen to like this type of sound, so that's fine. Right, so we have that. Then, for our G, of course, you can play the, that G, too. Um, I like G sus, too, this one. Think about it. It's like playing a D power chord. And then put a G on the bass. A G note on the bass, right? And you got that sound. So now, our chord progression is sounding like this.
That sounds cool already. If you want to, you can play a G major 7 too. That, that would also work. And it's a totally different flavor. At that point, it changes. Everything you're doing changes completely. Right? If you're going from, uh, from say, like an A sauce to... Right? Versus... That's a lot more open, right? And then for F, since this video is running long, gosh, so long, we're gonna go to F major seven sharp 11. Sounds fancy, but it's just an F and you leave the two, the first and second strings open, like this. That's an F major seven sharp 11, so here. And then we'll go back to our G, so it's two. And then let's go back to our, oops, wrong chord. A minor, uh, A minor add nine. G sus 2, F major in sharp 11, G sus 2, there I messed up there, but you get the idea, and you can keep toying with it, right, so combine some of the concepts from the other videos of what I was talking about, moving the notes around inside the course you already know, do that and see just how interesting you can make a simple chord progression like A minor, G, F, G. We know it works, let's make it interesting. Okay, give it a try, play around with it, and I'll see you guys next time.